Hello and welcome to another section of this complete Angular course. In this section, we are going to learn all about dynamic components. So in the Angular fundamental section, we learned about components in great detail. We learned how to create a component, how to use a component, how the components are rendered and many more things. Now in this section, we are going to learn more about components and we are going to learn about dynamic components. What is its use and how to create and use them in our Angular application. So what is a dynamic component? Dynamic components are those components which we create dynamically at runtime. Let's try to understand what is a dynamic component with a simple example. So here, let's say we have an Angular application and in that Angular application, we are displaying a list of users. So here we are displaying the details of each user. And for each user, we also have this delete button. Now what we want is whenever this delete button is clicked, we want to render a component dynamically. So when this delete button is clicked, let's say we want to render this component where we are showing a confirmation window to the user. So this component should be rendered in the browser only when the delete button is clicked. It should not be rendered when the Angular application loads initially. So here we want to load a component on runtime when a specific action is performed. In this case, when the delete button is clicked. And this can be achieved by creating a dynamic component. Now remember that dynamic component is not a specific feature provided by Angular. Instead, it's just a normal component which gets created on runtime. We create or render dynamic component by writing some code. Now, as I mentioned, the dynamic components are rendered on runtime by executing some code. And there are two ways in which we can load a dynamic component in Angular. We can render a component dynamically either by using ng if directive or we can render a component dynamically by using dynamic component loader. Now, we already know how ng if directive can be used to render a component or HTML element dynamically in the web page. We have already learned about ng if directive in great detail in the previous lectures of this course. Now, when we want to load a component dynamically using ng if directive, all we have to do is on the selector of that component, let's say the component is delete component and the selector for that component is app delete. So on the selector of that component, we will use this ng if directive and to that we need to assign a TypeScript expression which should return a Boolean value. If the TypeScript expression returns truthy value, in that case, that component will be rendered in the web page. But if the TypeScript expression returns a falsy value, in that case, that component will not get rendered in the web page. And if the component is already rendered and the TypeScript expression is returning a falsy value, in that case, that component will be removed from the web page. So creating a dynamic component using ng if directive is as simple as that. Another approach which we can use to create and render a dynamic component is by using dynamic component loader. Now remember that this dynamic component loader was used in past to load components dynamically and this was a helper utility that you should not use anymore. Using this approach, we can create and render a component by writing some code and then we can manually attach that component in the DOM. In this approach, we as a developer need to specify how the component will be instantiated, how the data will be passed into that component and also when to remove that component. In simple words, everything that ng if does for us, we need to do it by our own when using dynamic component loader approach. Now in this section, we will learn about both these approaches. That's because if you are creating a new Angular application or your application uses recent version of Angular, then ng if approach is all you need to know about. But if you are working on an Angular application where older version of Angular is used and there dynamic component loader approach is being used to create dynamic components, then it's good to have that knowledge as well. So this was a very high level overview of what is a dynamic component and what are the different ways in which we can create a dynamic component in Angular. Now in the next lecture, we will learn how we can create a dynamic component using ng if directive practically. And then in the later lectures, we will also learn how we can create a dynamic component using dynamic component loader approach. In the last lecture, we learned that we can create a dynamic component in Angular using two ways. First, by using ng if directive 
and second by using dynamic component loader. Now in this lecture we will learn how we can create and render a component dynamically using ngif directive. For that I have created a very simple angular application. In this angular application we have two links this home link and this user link. In the home link we are displaying some content for the home page and if I go to this user link to this user page there we are displaying a list of users. Now what we want is when the delete button of any one of these users is clicked we want to display a confirm model window and that confirm model window should be rendered dynamically. So when this delete button is clicked we will show a confirm model window in that confirm model window if the user clicks on ok button we will delete the user otherwise if the user clicks on cancel button we will not delete the user. Now let's go to VS code and there I have created a new angular project called angular dynamic components. Now this angular project it uses angular version 8. So if I go to package.json file there you will notice that all the angular packages are of version 8. Now there is a reason why I have created this project in angular version 8 and you will understand it in the coming lectures. But whatever I am going to explain in this section that also holds true for the newer versions of angular as well. Alright now in this project if I expand this source folder there we have an app component and apart from this app component we also have a home component and the user component. So in the web page this content it is coming from home component and this content it is coming from user component. Okay, now if I expand this user component, there I have also created a component called confirm delete. Okay, so if I go to the TS file of this confirm delete component and let's copy the selector from here and let me open the HTML file of user component and there after this table. So basically using this table, we are displaying the list of users. After this table, I will add that selector. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. This is how the confirm delete component looks like. And it is this component which we want to render dynamically whenever the delete button is clicked. Okay, so only when the delete button is clicked, we want to render this component. Initially when the page loads, this component should not be rendered in the web page. So for that what we are going to do is we want to use this selector here inside the view template of user component. So what we will do is in the user component class we will create a property. There we already have this users property which is storing a list of users which we are displaying in the web page. There I am also going to create a new property maybe show confirm delete component. You can name this property anything but I just want to give it a meaningful name that's why I'm calling it show confirm delete component because using this show confirm delete component we are either going to render the confirm delete component in the DOM or we are going to remove the confirm delete component from the DOM and it is going to be of type boolean and initially I'll set it to false. Now let's go back to user component.html and there we want to render this confirm delete component dynamically for that on the selector of this confirm delete component we are going to use ng if directive and to this ng if directive we need to assign a typescript expression which should return a boolean value here i am going to use this property and i am going to assign this property to this ng if directive so when the value of this show confirm delete component is false this component will not get rendered in the web page but when its value is true then only this confirm delete component it will be rendered in the web page okay so currently the value of this show confirm delete component it is false if i save the changes if we go to the web page initially you will notice that confirm delete component has not been rendered because initially the value of this show confirm delete component is false now what we want is in the web page when this delete button is clicked that time we want to show the confirm delete component for that let's go back to vs code and let's go to the view template of this user component.html there we have that delete button here so on this delete button i am going to bind click event and when this click event will happen i want to call a method on delete clicked now let's go ahead and let's create this method inside the component class so let's go to user component.ts file 
there let's create this method and inside this method all we will do is we will simply set this show confirm delete component to true so let's say this dot show confirm delete component equals true let's save the changes let's go to the web page and initially the confirm delete component has not been loaded if i open the developers tool here in the elements if i expand this body this app root there you will see that we have a div we have nav container we have main container and then we have this router outlet and in place of this router outlet this user component is being rendered so you can see the selector of that user component okay there we have this table but you will not see confirm delete component rendered here so after this table only we are using the confirm delete component right but that is not been rendered here yet but when i click on this delete button you will notice that that confirm delete component has been rendered so this has been added here okay so this component it is being rendered dynamically at the runtime initially when the page loads it is not getting rendered only when the delete button is clicked that time only this component has been rendered so this is what a dynamic component is a dynamic component gets centered at the runtime dynamically so this is how using ng if directive we can render a component dynamically now what we also want is here if you see here we have this hard coded value john smith but now what i want is let me reload the page again so let's say i want to delete this user sara king so when i click on this delete button it should say are you sure you want to delete the user sara king but currently it says john smith because this value is hard coded so what we want is to this confirm delete component we also want to pass this user data the current user data for which we have clicked on the delete button and doing that is very simple we can achieve it using custom property binding so in the confirm delete component we are going to create a property let's call this property maybe user to delete it is going to be of type user so i have created this user model okay and now we are going to bind this user delete in the parent component so we are using this confirm delete component here so here we are going to do a property binding so to this user delete we want to assign this user object but here the problem is this confirm delete component we are using it outside of this table so outside of this table basically we are using this ng4 directive on this tr element so outside of this tr element this user variable will not be available so what we will do is in the user component.ts also we will create a property maybe let's call it user to delete it is also going to be of type user okay and when the delete button is clicked that time we will set this dot user and let's say we are going to get the current user as an argument here so here let's provide a parameter let's also call it user and it is going to be of type user class and then to this user property let's assign that user parameter and here we have this error and the error says user does not exist on type user component all right so we are naming it as user to delete so we want to set that one okay now when we are calling this on delete click there we also need to pass the user object so here we are calling this on delete click to that let's pass this current user okay so in this way we will also have the user which we want to delete inside this user to delete property so i'm going to assign this user to delete property to this user to delete property of confirm delete component okay you can also name it something else in order to avoid any confusion all right so in this way inside this confirm delete component inside this user to delete we will have that user object which we want to delete and we can use this property in the html so here instead of showing a hard coded value what i will do is i will use string interpolation syntax and there i'll say user to delete dot name okay let's save the changes and let's quickly check if it works let's go to the web page and there we are not seeing anything let's see if we have any error 
and here we have an error and it says cannot bind user to delete since it isn't a known property of confirm delete so if i go back to vs code let's go to user component.html and there we are trying to bind user to delete now in the confirm delete component we have this property user to delete but for some reason this property is not being recognized that's because if you remember in order to do custom property binding we first need to decorate this property with at input decorator so that is the part which we missed okay and in order to use this at input decorator we also need to import input from angular slash go with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page and now we don't have any error let me close this let's go to this users page and now we can see all the users now when i click on this delete button of this sara king in that case in the confirm model it should show the username but here we still don't have the username let's see why is that let's go to vs code and let's go to confirm delete component.html and there i think we have this typo error so let me copy this property name it is user to delete and let's go to confirm delete component.html and there let's say user to delete so here you see this t is in caps but in the property name the t is in lowercase with this if we save the changes if you go to the web page and now when i click on this delete button you will see are you sure you want to delete user sara king so this is working let me refresh the page and let's say i want to delete jonas flaming so i will click on this delete button in that case that name should come here so in this way we can pass data to a dynamic component using custom property binding so here we are creating a property decorated with at input decorator and then here we are doing custom property binding now what i also want is when this ok button is clicked i want to return true and when this cancel button is clicked i want to return false and also when any one of these buttons is clicked i want to remove this confirm delete component from the dom let's see how we can achieve that for that we can use custom event binding so let's go back to VS code and let's go to confirm delete component there let's go ahead and let's create an event so to create an event first of all we need to use at output decorator and in order to use this at output decorator we also need to import it from angular slash co okay now here I want to create an event and let me call this event on confirmation this is going to be an event so the type here should be event emitter and we need to import this event emitter from angular slash go now here we also need to specify the type of data it is going to emit in this case it is going to emit a boolean value okay and let's go ahead and let's create a new instance of event emitter for that we can use this new keyword event emitter and here also we need to specify the type of data it is going to emit in this case it is going to emit a boolean value and after that we need to use a set of parentheses so here we are creating an event now we want to raise this event now when this event should be raised this event should be raised when either the ok button or the cancel button is clicked okay so in order to raise this event i am going to create another method i'll call this method maybe on confirmation button clicked okay and here we are going to receive a value which is going to be of type boolean and then what we want is we want to emit this event so here we will say this dot on confirmation dot emit okay and to this emit we also need to pass the value which we want to emit whenever this event is raised so in this case we want to emit the value which we are going to receive inside this value parameter all right now when we are going to call this method we are going to call this method whenever either the ok button or cancel button is clicked so let me copy this method name let's go to confirm delete component dot html so let me close this one for now let's also close this user component dot ts 
and here we have the confirm delete component.html. There we have this OK button and cancel button. So here I'm going to bind click event on this OK button. And to this, I'll assign this method. Now, when the OK button is clicked, in that case, we want to emit true. So I'll pass true here. So this true will be assigned to this value parameter and that will be emitted whenever this on confirmation event is raised. In the same way, let's also bind click event on the cancel button. So here and when the cancel button is clicked, again, we want to emit a value false. So this false will be assigned to this value parameter and here we are raising the event and we are emitting this value false. All right, so let's save these changes. Now what we want is we want to bind this on confirmation event in the parent component. So the parent component here is user component. So here what we want is we want to bind this on confirmation event. And for event binding, we use a set of parentheses. And when this event happens, we want to do something. So here we are going to pass a method to this on confirmation. Let's say on user deletion confirmed. OK, you can also provide a meaningful name here. These names are getting a little bit lengthy, but I just want to use some meaningful name so that looking at the name user can understand what this method is going to do. All right. Now, this method will also receive the event data, which this on confirmation event will limit. And we know this on confirmation event, it is going to emit a Boolean value. So that Boolean value, we can specify it here and let's call it dollar event. Now let's go ahead and let's create this method in the component class of user component. So let's open user component.ts file there. Let's create this method. So this method is basically going to handle the confirmation clicked event. And here it is going to receive a value. It is going to receive the emitted value, which the event has emitted. And we know that that value is going to be of type Boolean. All right. So here, the first thing which we will do is this event, this on confirmation event, it will be raised only when the OK button or the cancel button is clicked. So here, what do we want to do is the first thing which we will do is we will set this show confirmation delete component to false. That means once the OK button or cancel button is clicked, we want to remove the confirm delete component from the DOM. So let me go ahead and let me set the value of this property to false. And then based on the value which we have received from the event, let's write an if statement. And here, let's say if the value is true, that means if the user has clicked on OK button, we are going to write the logic to delete the user. But if the user has clicked on cancel button, in that case, we will simply hide the component. We will hide the confirm model window and we will do nothing. So let's quickly test if it is working or not. Let's go to web page. And there, when I click on this delete button, it is showing this confirm model window. Now, when I click on this, OK, it should hide this window. That means it should remove this component from the DOM. If I click on OK, so nothing is happening here. If I click on this cancel button, in that case, also nothing is happening. Let's see why is that. Let's go to VS Code. And let's go to confirm delete component. So there we are binding the click. Ah, here I'm misspelling this click. So it should be click. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And now when I click on this delete button, it should show the confirm delete component. When I click on OK, it should hide this component. In the same way, if I click on cancel, in that case also, it should hide this component. That means it should remove that component from the DOM. So in this way, using custom event binding, we can also emit some data from the dynamic component. Okay, so if we want to pass data to dynamic component, we use custom property binding. But if we want to emit some data from the dynamic component, we can use custom event binding. So this is how we can create and use a dynamic component in Angular using ng if directive. Here we are using this ng if directive in order to render this confirm delete component dynamically. And to this dynamic component, we can also pass some data using custom property binding and we can get some data using custom event binding. 
Now, all which is left is when the delete button is clicked, we might want to delete the user. So for that, let's write the logic. So in order to delete the user, first we need the index of that user object in the users array. So for that, in this class, we already have access to this user service. From there, we want to access the users array. And in that users array, we want to check the index of the user which we want to delete. And we have that user inside this user to delete property. So here, let's say this dot user to delete. So this will give us the index of that user. Let's go ahead and let's store it in a variable and let's call it index. Now, using this index, we want to delete the user from the users array. So again, for that, we'll say this dot user service dot users. So it is this array from where we want to delete the user. And on this, we are going to use splice method. And to this splice method, we are going to pass the index. So we have that index inside this index variable. And from this index, how many elements do we want to delete? We only want to delete one element. We only want to delete one user, right? So we'll pass one. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And let's say I want to delete this Mary Jane user. So when I click on this delete button, if I click on cancel, that user will not be deleted. But if I click on this delete button and when I click on OK, in that case, that user has been deleted. So in this lecture, we learned how we can create and render a dynamic component using ng if directive. Now, in the next lecture, let's learn how we can create and render a component dynamically in the DOM by writing some code. In this lecture, we are going to learn how to create a dynamic component by writing some code and then we will also pass some data to this component and emit events from that dynamic component by executing a piece of code. But before that, let me say that I strongly recommend using ng if for creating dynamic components. There are rarely situations where you absolutely need the imperative approach, which you are going to learn next. But using the approach of ng if is so much easier, and therefore I highly recommend using that approach for creating dynamic components. With that being said, Let's also learn how we can create dynamic components entirely by writing some code. So currently, we are rendering this confirm delete component dynamically using ng if directive. But now what we will do is, we will remove this line from here or I'll simply comment it for your reference. So now, we are not using the selector of this confirm delete component anywhere now. When we use the selector of a component, we know that that component gets instantiated and its view gets rendered in the DOM. But now we are not using the selector of this confirm delete component. So now what we want is we want to write some code and using that code first we want to instantiate this confirm delete component and then we want to render its view somewhere in the DOM. So let's see how we can do that. Let me save this file and i'll close this user component.html file because now everything we are going to do is inside the component class now the next question is where should we write the code to create and render the component dynamically well here our requirement is when the delete button for a user is clicked at that time only we want to render the confirm delete component right and from where we are displaying these users we are displaying these users from the user component. So in the user component, we have this users array and we are looping over this users array to display all the users. And inside this user components only, we have the delete button. So we are going to write the code to create a component dynamically and render it inside this user component. So first of all, I'll go ahead and I'll create a method. I'm going to call this method show confirm delete. You can name this method anything. And inside this method, we are going to write the logic of instantiating the confirm delete component and also rendering it in the DOM. Now, when do we want to call this show confirm delete method? We want to call this method when this delete button is clicked. And when this delete button is clicked, we are calling this on delete clicked method. So let's go to user component.ts. And from here, I'm going to comment these two lines. For now, we don't need it. 
and from within this method we are simply going to call this show confirm delete method and in order to access this method we also need to use this keyword okay so this is the first step now when we were using the ng if approach there we were also passing the user object the user which we want to delete using the property binding in the same way if we want to pass a data to the component which we are creating dynamically using code all we can do is we can pass it as an argument to this method so for example here let's say i'll create a parameter i'll call it user it is going to be of type user and when i'm calling this show confirm delete method here we have this user to delete property we are going to pass this user to delete property to this show confirm delete so here we will simply say this dot user to delete and remember from last lecture that to this user to delete we are assigning the user object which we want to delete and we are getting this user object from the view so when we are calling this on delete click method there we are also passing the user object for which the delete button has been clicked so in this way we can pass data to the dynamic component now the first thing which we need to do here is we need to create an instance of confirm delete component for that we cannot simply go ahead and we can use new keyword and try to instantiate this confirm delete component it is not going to work let's also assign it to a variable let's simply call it component so this approach is not going to work it is not going to throw any error because this is a valid TypeScript expression so it will not throw any error but here when we try to instantiate a component class like this it is not going to work because behind the scenes angular does a lot of work when rendering a component in the ui it does not just create an instance of the component class but it does a lot of things behind the scenes for example angular needs to attach the view template it needs to wire up the change detection and many more things but this line here where we are trying to instantiate this confirm delete component by using new keyword it is simply creating an instance of confirm delete component class this is just a normal javascript object and this is not just the only thing which angular needs in order to render the view in the web page so this is not how we need to instantiate the dynamic component this will not work so let's remove this line now in order to create an instance of confirm delete component we can simply ask angular to do that and for that angular gives us a tool called as component factory and in order to get access to that component factory we want angular to inject an instance of component factory resolver so here we have a constructor in this constructor i'm going to create a private parameter and let's simply call it component factory resolver and this should be of type component factory resolver and in order to use this component factory resolver we also need to import it from angular slash co okay so in this way inside this component factory resolver parameter since we are using a private keyword before it behind the scenes a property called component factory resolver will be created and that property will store an instance of this component factory resolver class now we can use that instance to get access to component factory so inside this method let's simply say this dot component factory resolver dot resolve component factory and to this method we need to pass the type of the component class which we want to instantiate in this case we want to have an instance of confirm delete component so let's pass the name of that class and in this way angular will create an instance of confirm delete component class for us now this resolve component factory this method will return us a component factory it will not return us component itself but it will return us a component factory and we can assign it to a variable so let's go ahead and let's create a variable and let's call it confirm delete component factory okay you can name it anything 
but I'm simply going to call it confirm delete component factory. Let's also move it in separate lines so that it will be more readable. All right. So again, this resolve component factory, it is going to return us a component factory. And we are storing that component factory inside this confirm delete component factory variable. So now this confirm delete component factory, it is an object which knows how to create confirm delete component. So this is the first thing which we need to do here. We are trying to create an instance of confirm delete component. Keep in mind that the instance has not been created yet. We have a component factory using which we can create an instance, but the instance is not created yet. Now, as we learned, we can use this component factory to create a concrete component. But to do that, we also need a place where we can attach it in the DOM. So once we have created an instance of the confirm delete component, we also want to render its view somewhere in the DOM. So now we also need to tell Angular where in the DOM we want to render the view of this confirm delete component. Because when we are creating a dynamic component by writing some code, there we are not using any selector. So Angular does not know where to render the view of a dynamic component. So we also need to tell that to the Angular. So the first thing for that which we need to do is, let's say we want to render the view of confirm delete component after this table. So after this table, I'm going to create a div. And within this div, I want to render the view of confirm delete component. Now how we will tell Angular that within this div, we want to render the view of confirm delete component. Here, this div, it is going to be the container for the view of confirm delete component. So here, we need an instance of view container ref. The view container ref is an object which is managed internally by Angular, which gives Angular a reference, a pointer to a place in the DOM. And using that reference, Angular can manipulate that place in the DOM. And you might remember view container ref from our lectures where we learned how to create a custom structural directive. So what we will do is we will create a directive and in that directive, we will have a property and that property will store a reference to a DOM element inside which we want to render the view of confirm delete component. Now, how are we going to do that? First of all, let's go ahead and let's create a directive. So inside this app folder, I'm going to create a directive for that. Let's create a file and I want to name the directive as view container. You can name it anything dot directive dot ts. And let me make this C in capital. And in here, let's go and let's create a directive class and let's export it. Let's decorate this class with a directive decorator. And in order to use this a directive decorator, we also need to import it from angular slash go and to this add directive decorator let's pass a metadata object and in there let's specify a selector and we have learned that when we use a directive there we use an attribute selector and for the attribute selector we need to specify square brackets and in there we need to specify a name for the selector let's simply call it app container okay and let's go ahead and let's use this app container on that div where we want to render the view of confirm delete component so basically here let's save the changes now in the directive class let's go ahead and let's specify a constructor and inside this constructor we are going to create a public parameter so behind the scenes, it will create a public property and let's call it view container. And it is going to be of type view container ref. Okay. And in order to use this view container ref, we also need to import it from angular slash go. So in this way, behind the scenes, a public property called view container will be created, which will store the reference of the DOM element on which we are using the selector of this view container directive. Basically, in this example, this view container, it will store a reference of this div element because it is on this div element 
where we are using the selector of that directive. Now, the one thing which is left here is we have created this directive, but we have not registered it. So let's go ahead and let's register this view container directive in the app module. So here we have this app module.ts file. There in the declaration section, let's declare this view container. Okay, with this, let's save the changes. Let's quickly check if we have any error in the web page. We don't have any error. Let's close this app module.ts file. Okay, so now since we have used that directive on this div, that directive has a view container property which will store a reference to this div. Right. So now what we are going to do is we are going to access a reference to this div from the component class. So let me first close this confirm delete component.html. Let's also close this directive or I'll keep this directive open. Let's go to user component.ts file. Okay, and here I'm going to create a property. Let me create that property here and I'm going to call it maybe container. And in this container, what I want is I want to store a reference of view container directive. I want to store a reference of this directive. So here the type is going to be view container. Okay. Now on this container, I'm going to use at view child decorator. And in order to use this view child decorator, we also need to import it from angular slash go. So let's first go ahead and let's do that. Okay. And to this view child decorator, we need to pass a parameter. So basically, in the view of this user component, if I go to user component.html, there we are using this app container directive. So we can access this app container directive using view child decorator. And that's what we are trying to do here. So here we are going to pass the type of the view container directive. So the type will be view container, the directive class name. Okay. So in this case, now this view child it will find the first occurrence of the selector of this view container directive in this case we have only one occurrence this occurrence so a reference of this app container will be assigned to this container property here okay basically this container it is going to store a reference of view container directive now here since we are using angular version 8 we also need to pass the options object here to this view child decorator and there we are simply going to set the static property to false okay in angular 16 you don't need to do this but in angular 8 you have to also specify this options object all right so this container it is storing a reference of view container directive now using this container property we can access the view container ref so here we can simply say this dot container which is storing a reference of view container directive in that class in this view container directive class we have a property called view container which is of type view container ref so we want to access this view container property so we can say container dot view container and we are going to store it in a variable Let's call this variable maybe container view ref. So this container view ref, it is going to store a reference of this div. And inside this div, we want to render the view of confirm delete component, right? So the next thing which we need to do is if inside that container, again, the container is this div. So if inside this div, there is already something rendered, we want to clear it. For that, we can say container view ref. And on that, we can call this clear method. So if anything already rendered within this view, we are clearing it. And now, finally, we can use our component factory, which we are storing inside this confirm delete component factory variable. We can use it to create a new instance of confirm delete component and render it inside this container view ref view. For that, we can simply say container view ref dot 
and on this we have a method called create component to this create component we need to pass the component factory and we have a component factory inside this variable so we will pass it here so in this way here we are creating an instance and here we are rendering the instance of that component in the dom okay with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page and let me click on this delete button you will notice that nothing is happening let me go ahead and let me open the developer console and let's see if we have any error and the error says no component factory found for confirm delete component did you add it to at ng module dot entry components so let's try to understand what is entry component and how to fix this issue in our next lecture in the last lecture we tried to render a dynamic component programmatically but now when we try to test it we have this strange error and the error says no component factory found for confirm delete component did you add it to ng module dot entry components now if you are not getting this error that simply means that you are using angular 9 or higher version this is a tiny change which was made behind the scenes of angular which makes the implementation work out of the box but if you are getting this error that's because you are using angular 8 or lower version and in that case let me explain why you are getting this error and this is also the reason why I created this project using Angular 8 version because I wanted to show you this error message and I wanted to explain what entry components are. All right, so the error message says no component factory found for confirm delete component. But if you remember in the last lecture, we created a component factory for this confirm delete component, right? So we have a component factory here. Then why Angular did not find this component factory? Well, in the same error message, we also have this message. Did you add it to ng module dot entry components? So if we can understand this error message, it will be easier for us to fix this problem. Now, in order to understand this, what you need to understand is how Angular works behind the scenes when it comes to creating Angular components. We already know that when we create a component directive pipes, we need to add them in the declaration section of the app module. So inside this declaration sections, we add all our components, directives, pipes, etc. And here, if you see, we are already adding this confirm delete component to this declarations array of this app module. The reason why we need to add all our components, directives and pipes inside this declarations array is because we want to make our Angular application aware of all these components, directives, pipes, etc, which we have created and planning to use. And that's why Angular is able to create and render a component when it finds it in one of the two places. The first place is the view template of a component. So if we are using a selector of a component somewhere in the view template, for example, if I go to user component.html, here currently we are not using any selector of a component, but earlier we were using the selector of this confirm delete component. So when Angular finds a selector of a component, in a view template what it does is it checks if in the declaration sections of that app module if that component is registered or not if that component is registered then angular will create an instance of that component and it will render its view in the web page another place where the angular will look for a component is in your routes so for example here i am defining a route and in this routes we have a route for home and for users and if you notice inside these routes i'm using home component and user component now i'm not using the selector of this home component and user component anywhere in the view template if i go to app component.html there you will not see a selector of home component or user component instead you will see this router outlet directive so the route is the second place where the angular will look for a component if there we are using a component it will check if that component is declared inside the declarations array or not so for example when the user clicks root url slash home we want to render the view of home component 
so in that case it will check if this home component is registered in the declaration section of this app module or not and there this home component is registered so in that case angular will create an instance of this home component and it will render its view in the web page but here let me close this app module.ts file and let me also close this user component.html here we are trying to create a component dynamically by writing some code and we are trying to render it in the dom now we are not using this confirm delete component in any view template so we are not using the selector of this confirm delete component anywhere in the view template and we are also not using it in the routes right here we are creating our own component factory with the confirm delete component and in this case angular will not reach out to the declarations array to check if we have declared the confirm delete component there or not we know that in the declarations array we have declared the confirm delete component but angular is not going to look for this confirm delete component in the declarations array because it is not finding this confirm delete component either in view template or in the defined routes and because of that angular is not going to create and render this confirm delete component so here we need to tell angular that we want to create a confirm delete component and we want to render it at this place inside this div and to do that we need to make angular aware about this confirm delete component because as we learned angular will scan declarations array only when we try to use a component in a template or a route at that time only it will scan the declarations array and create the component for us when we are going to create a dynamic component like this by writing some code angular will not scan declarations array and hence it is not aware about that component so it cannot create and render it in the dom now in order to make angular scan the declarations array when we are creating dynamic component using component factory we need to use a special property in ng module directive called as entry components so if i go to app module there we have some properties like declarations imports providers and bootstrap in the same way we can also specify another property called entry components and it is also going to store an array we use this property to specify all those components which should be created and which we are not using in the view template by using its selector or which we have not specified in the routes keep in mind that we don't need this entry component property if we want to render a component which is used in a view or which is used in a route that's why we did not needed it earlier and another very important point which you need to remember is that depending on the angular version you are using you might not need it if your angular application uses angular 9 or higher versions in that case this property is not required to specify explicitly because in angular 9 or higher versions angular under the hood uses a different rendering engine and there it works differently so if you are using angular 9 or higher version you don't need to specify this property explicitly but even if you specify this it is not going to create any error okay it is still going to work but you don't need to specify it explicitly but in angular 8 and lower version you need to specify it explicitly if you are creating a dynamic component by writing some code so here to this entry component we need to specify the component name and the component name is confirm delete component so let's specify it here with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page and now when i click on the delete button now you will notice that that confirm delete component is being rendered dynamically now here we have this error this error is because here we also want to display the name of the user which we want to delete and for that we are trying to read the name property on the user object but currently we are not passing any user object to this component when we are creating it dynamically by writing some code here currently we are not passing this user object to this component right in that case this user object inside this confirm delete component here here this user to delete object it will be undefined on that we are trying to access the name property and that's why we have this error so it says cannot read property of undefined reading name so let's see in the next lecture how we can pass data to a dynamic component when we are creating it by writing some code and also 
how to emit data from the dynamic component when we are creating that dynamic component by writing some code. In the last lecture, we rendered the confirm delete component dynamically into the DOM by executing some code. Now in this lecture, what we are going to do is we are going to learn how we can pass data to that dynamic component and also how to listen to the events which the dynamic component is emitting from our code. So currently what is happening is when I click on the delete button, it is showing that confirm delete component, but there we are not seeing the username and we are not seeing the username because we are not passing any user object to this confirm delete component. If I go to VS code there to this show confirm delete function, we are passing the user object which we are deleting, but we are not using it anywhere. We are not passing it to this confirm delete component. Let's see how we can do that. So this line here, it is going to create and render the confirm delete component in the web page. And it is also going to return us a reference to that component. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable. I'll call it component ref. You can name it anything. And let me make this R in caps. Okay. So here this variable, it is going to store a reference to this confirm delete component in the memory. Now, using that reference, we can get the instance which has been created for that confirm delete component. So here I can say component ref dot instance. So here we have this instance property and this instance property, it is going to give us the instance of the confirm delete component, which has been created. And on that, we can access all the properties of confirm delete component class. For example, in the confirm delete component class, we have this user to delete property, right? So we can access this property and to that we can assign this user, which we are getting as the parameter for this function. With this, if we save the changes, let's go to the web page. Now, when I click on the delete button, you will see that the name of that user is being displayed, which we are trying to delete. Currently, this OK and cancel button will not work because we are not listening to the events. So let me refresh the page again. And if I try to delete John Smith, for that, if I click on this delete button, you will see in the message it says, are you sure you want to delete the user John Smith? So this is how we can pass data to the dynamic component when we are creating it programmatically. Next, what we also want to do is, if I go to the component class for this confirm delete component, there we also have this on confirmation event. So what we want is whenever this event is emitted, we want to remove this component from the DOM. That means we want to hide this component. And also if the user has clicked on cancel button, we will not do anything. But if the user has clicked on OK button, in that case, we want to delete that user. Let's see how we can achieve that. So again, let's go back to user component.ts. And again, on this instance, we are going to access this property and this property it is basically an event so let's go ahead and let's access this event for that again we'll say component ref dot instance dot and then we have this on confirmation event and what we are going to do is we are going to subscribe to this event so whenever this event will happen we will come to know about it okay and to this subscribe method we need to pass a callback function that callback function is going to receive the data and this data we know it is going to be either a boolean value true or false because that's what we are emitting from this event right we are emitting a boolean value so we are subscribing to that event and the first thing which we want to do is since we know that we are going to remove this confirm delete component from the dom first we will unsubscribe from this on confirmation event Okay, so for that, what I'm going to do is I'll create a property here and let me call it maybe on confirmation observable and I'll access this property from here. So here, this line of code, it is going to return us an observable, which we are subscribing to. So here, let's say this dot on confirm OBS. Okay, so the first thing which we will do inside this callback function, the callback function which we are passing to the subscribe method is we will 
unsubscribe from that observable basically here it is going to return a subject and we want to unsubscribe from that subject and for that we are going to use the unsubscribe method on this on confirmation obs observable so this is the first thing then what we want to do is we want to remove this component from the dom okay so when i click on this delete button and when this ok or cancel button is clicked we want to remove this component from the dom for that we are rendering that component inside this container view ref right so what we'll do is we will simply say container view ref dot clear okay let's see if the changes let's go to the web page and let's see if it works so i click on this delete button the confirm delete component has been rendered and it has been displayed when i click on cancel button it has been removed let me click on this delete button again again the confirm delete component has been rendered when i click on this ok button it has been removed so that is working as expected but when we are clicking on this ok button it is not deleting the user so let's also write the logic for that and we have already written that logic somewhere so here we have that logic so let me copy this if statement from here and i'll paste it here okay now here we don't have this value but we do have this data and in this data that value will be stored which this on confirmation event is going to emit and it is either going to emit true or false so this data it is either going to store a value true or it is going to store a boolean value false so we are going to use that data here inside this if statement let's save the changes let's go back to the web page and when i click on this delete button when i click on cancel it will not delete the user but it will remove that confirm delete component from the dom but if i click on this ok button so currently we are trying to delete sara king if i click on this ok button it should delete that user and you will notice that that user sara king she has been removed from this list so that user has been deleted so this is how we can pass data to a component which we are creating dynamically by using its instance and accessing its property and assigning it with some value and if we want to listen to events which that component can emit again on the instance we can access its event and we can subscribe to that event and keep in mind that it is always a good practice to unsubscribe from an observable explicitly and i know that once this event is emitted i'm going to remove that component from the dom that's why before removing that component from the dom i want to unsubscribe from it so this was all about dynamic components in angular we learned how we can create a dynamic component and how we can render it in the dom using ngif directive and also how we can do it by writing some code now as i have mentioned earlier i strongly recommend using ngif for creating dynamic components there are rarely situations where you absolutely need to use this approach where we are writing some code in order to create and render a component dynamically using ngif is much easier and there everything will be taken care by ngif directive so this was all about dynamic component in angular this is all from this section if you have any questions related to dynamic components then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day